So the next example we're going to look at is where the network operator has two connections to one internet exchange point. In the previous multi-homing examples, we demonstrated just a single router connecting to the IX LAN. But as the IX grows, it becomes critical infrastructure for the local internet economy. More members join it, more traffic flows across the IX, and maybe the Ethernet switch either runs out of capacity or the members are requesting that the IX provides redundancy for members. And this second Ethernet switch would be on the same layer 2 infrastructure as the original switch. So how do we configure BGP and the traffic engineering for two connections to this IX? The diagram shows the two Ethernet links from separate switches to the two routers in the IXP member, AS100. The second connection for the IXP LAN is on the same subnet as an IXP. This is quite common in many internet exchange points, where quite often the exchange point would assign two or three IP addresses from the one subnet to each member. So setting up BGP is easy enough. We set up a second eBGP session, and that will be established with the exchange point route server, or route servers, if they are present. It will be set up with other IXP members, with their second router, if they have one. And it will be set up with IXP services infrastructure, if the exchange point offers services for the good of all members. So let's look at how the outbound traffic engineering would be configured. By default, the link chosen will follow BGP best path rules. In the absence of any other member policy, for example, members might send multi-exit discriminators or meds, the best path will basically come down to the lowest neighbor IP address on the exchange point LAN, which most likely means that one link will carry all the traffic and the other link will remain relatively empty. AS100 particular announcements from peers or using any BGP community policy implemented by other members. Inbound traffic engineering by default would follow the link chosen according to BGP best path rules. In the absence of any local policy, again, for example, meds sent to other peers, the best path will be the lowest IP address on the IX LAN. AS100 could balance over the two physical links by setting meds on particular announcements to peers. Half the peers could have announcements of med 10 on one link and med 20 on the other link. And the other half of the peers could have the med values reversed. And this all assumes that the peers even respect meds, which is getting less and less likely these days. Well, the other way we could do it is by implementing a BGP community policy, which is available for other members to use. Sometimes, internet exchange points recommend what a community policy might be. We could try using ASPath prepends, but for this we need to be careful, because we don't want the IX path to be longer than that via paid transit links. Otherwise, we could well end up with peering traffic coming over our expensive and maybe long-haul transit connections. The other thing we could do is bond the two Ethernet connections together. In some circumstances, the IXP may offer the facility of creating an aggregated link. It's called a LAG, a link aggregation group. This provides redundancy at layer 2. For example, 2 gigabit Ethernet links will effectively present as 2 gigabits per second on a single connection on the router. The BGP session is established over the lag rather than an individual links. Load balancing is, is at layer 2, contained within the lag itself. Now, this is only possible if the member provisions one router for the IXP connection. And we're getting to the point now where the member probably wants to implement two connections from two separate routers. And it's not desirable if the IXP provisions the two links on separate switches unless the switch vendor supports creating a lag that's shared over two switches, which starts getting to be quite a complex configuration and probably isn't really worth the extra complexity.